Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel where I discuss all things Linux. In this video, we're going to introduce Tmux options. Tmux options affect the look and behavior of your Tmux environment. So you can do some very helpful things, like having Tmux notify you when a script is finished, send all keystrokes to all panes, and so much more. We'll introduce Tmux options with the simplest syntax possible to get you started. The main takeaway in this video is to always be aware of where your cursor is located with respect to the session, window, and pane, because all actions in this video will stem from its location. I will also have a chapter in this video recapping everything. So if certain parts are unclear, the recap should help review and solidify most of these concepts. Let's jump right in. As we already know, launching Tmux for the first time creates a server, session, window, and pane. Each one of these object types has all kinds of options. All kinds. The server itself has a default set of server options. These server options don't affect sessions, windows, or panes. You can view these server options by typing show option or show for short, then adding the dash S for server options. And you can scroll up and down with your arrow keys or page down and page up. This command also put us into what's called copy mode as indicated by this at the top right. To exit copy mode, type control C. If you want to view a particular server option, instead of the entire list, type the option you want at the end of the show command. If you want to overwrite these default options, use the set option command or set for short the option type server, then the option itself, then the value. And now we can confirm it. Moving down to sessions, every session under Tmux has its own private set of options. We can refer to these as local options. And we can view these local options with the show command. And specifying no flag assumes session options. You may have thought nothing happened, but no output just means there's no local options set. Any local options that are not defined are inherited from a set of global session options. We can view these global session options with the same command but then we add a dash G for global options. And now we have output. The key takeaway is that all local session options take precedence over global session options. Both options can be set, but a local session option will always win. A great option to demonstrate this global versus local is the option display panes time. The default timeout is too quick. Especially if you have many panes and you want to select the pane number before the timeout. So we'll see if this option is locally set. No output. So we'll check the global options. And there it is. 1000 milliseconds or one second. So I'll set the option locally to 4,000 milliseconds. And now it will display longer. Keep in mind, this option is set locally. And it's also set globally.
but now we know that all local options always take precedence. Now, if we create a new session, this new session has no local options, which makes sense because we just created it. So it is inheriting the global option of a thousand milliseconds. Therefore, the timeout for this session, this brand new session, will be one second. Now, if we want to set the option globally for 6,000 milliseconds, this will apply to all sessions, current and new, unless of course, they have the option set locally. So this session will now inherit the global option of six seconds. And the previous session still has its local option set. So if you want to unset a local option to resume inheriting from the global option, use the same syntax that you would to set it, then add the dash U for unset. The local option is now unset. And now we are inheriting the global option. Tmux window options behave identical to session options. Each window has a set of private or local options, and anything not locally set is inherited from a set of global window options. So everything we learned with sessions and local versus global carries over very well to Windows options. The only difference is knowing which window options are available to you but there's two that are very helpful, at least to me, as a Linux administrator. Now to view local window options, we still use the show command, but then you add a dash W for windows. And to view the global window options, same command, but you also add a G for global options. The first helpful window option is monitor silence. What this will do is notify us on the status line when a window has stopped producing output to the console after a certain interval. A great use case is when you have a script running and you don't want to babysit the window. You can set the monitor silence for that window, which would be a local option, and Tmux will tell you when it's done. We'll simulate this script with the ping command. First, we'll create a new window. We'll set the option for an interval of three seconds of silence. We'll ping Google, then go to another window to activate the silence monitoring. When the ping finishes, output to the console will stop. And after three seconds of silence, Tmux will notify us right here that the script has finished. Now with this option, you probably don't want to set it globally because all windows across all sessions will notify you when they are silent, but that is also an option if you need it. And here it is set locally. And likewise, to unset this option, add the dash U. Another window option that is very helpful to me is synchronized panes. With this option enabled, a single keystroke will be sent to all panes in your window. This option is very helpful when you want to run the same command on multiple servers at the same time, but still want to see the output and stay interactive with the commands. You would log into each server on each separate pane, turn on synchronize, 
do your work, then disable it when you are done, like so. Pane options are interesting. They behave similar to sessions and windows, but have a few caveats. The first thing to know is that pane options are also window options. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? And if you don't tell Tmux you are setting the option at the pane level, Tmux will assume you are actually setting it at the window level. And when you do that, all panes underneath that window will inherit the option. Sound familiar? The window option is the global version of a pane option. There is no global pane option list like with the sessions and windows. If you want a pane option to be global, quote unquote, you set it at the window level. Now each pane does, however, have its own local options. But again, we have to tell Tmux explicitly, we are setting the option as a pane option. Let's jump straight into an example. If we set this option blue, notice that all panes turned blue. This is because the pane option was assumed to be a window option by Tmux. And therefore, all panes underneath that window inherited the setting. Now to set a local pane option, move the cursor to the pane you want to configure and run the same command we just did before, but now add a dash P. This will tell Tmux to set the option at the pane local level, not at the window level. And remember, local pane options always take precedence over global options. We can see this pane option by adding the dash P to the show command. And there's our red setting. And the window option by adding dash W. And all other panes are only inheriting the window option. No pane option. And here is the pane global, quote unquote, or window option. Here's what we covered. Tmux has four types of options. Server, sessions, windows, and panes. Server options can be viewed with the show command with the dash S. Session local options can be viewed with this command from the respective session. And session global options can be viewed from any session by adding the dash G. And if both the local and global versions of an option are set, the local option will always win. Same goes for window options, including local versus global option precedence. You can view a local pane option by first putting your cursor to the specific pane and adding the dash P to the show command. Setting options for each type of object is very similar. You use the set command, specify the object type, add a dash G if it's global, and to unset, you add the dash U. Thank you for sticking with me for this introduction to Tmux options. This video did cover the simplest form of syntax that I could come up with. Now you should be able to read and experiment with different options for yourself and determine what best suits your particular workflow. Let me know in the comments below what questions you may have over what was covered. Thank you and have a great day.